We hey everybody, Last Outrider here. With a scene like this, you've got to guess there's only one thing I will be talking about. Eldar. And the question of the day, what are Banshee masks? Probably the most iconic Eldar weapon that they have, and definitely their most popular aspect warriors in my experience. So we're going to talk about the, what is a banshee mask? But before we can talk about what a banshee mask is, they will explain what a banshee is. And I'm sorry for all the people in Ireland, but they, apparently it's now an Eldar legend. Um, <clears throat> and then they're going to talk about what a war mask is. So let's get to it. The Banshee is a creature of Eldar myth, the harbinger of death, whose cry separates soul from body and casts it into the depths of the Immaterium, there to be the plaything of demons. It is from this ancient legend that the howling Banshee aspect warrior take their name. And it is from the scream of the creature that those who walk the path take inspiration for their most potent weapon, the Banshee Mask. The War Mask. The concept of the War Mask is at the core of the path of the warrior. Eldar, being more highly evolved than the lesser races, feel all sensations more keenly than do humans, Tau, or orcs. This allows them to embrace positive emotions, such as love, with a greater fervor than members of other species can even conceive. But it also heightens their experiences of darker feelings, such as rage, fear, and grief. The act of killing is likewise amplified. Where a human can kill another being with little guilt or remorse for an Eldar, to do so is an act that can endanger their very soul and risks drawing the dark attentions of she who thirsts. While the sensation-craving Camerites draw pleasure from bringing death, the craft welders prefer to separate their souls from the act of murder, and so, they don their masks of war before combat. The war mask is as much a metaphysical concept as a physical artifact. When the aspect warriors prepare for battle, they ritually take up their war masks, adopting another persona, one at ease with the blood that is soon to flow and temporarily abandoning the persona they are away from the shrine. They embrace the savage instincts that lurk in the heart of every Eldar and prepare to bring death in the name of the bloody-handed god. As they kill, it is their warrior persona who risks feeling the touch of she who thirsts, and when the battle is done, the foe vanquished, the Aspect Warriors remove their war masks and return to the person they were before the bloody acts they have committed. Before more... Oh, I'm sorry, wait, that's weird. They return to the person they were before the, other, the bloody acts they have committed. More distant dream than fresh memory. Yes, that's an awkward sentence. I'm sorry, I fucked that one up. In this way, they can eventually move on to other paths without bringing with them the trauma of the acts they have performed and the atrocities they have committed. Some aspect warriors who cleave too close to the path find that their war mask and true persona become one and the same. It is these lost souls who don the most ancient masks and potent war gear of their shrines and become exarchs, training others in the arts of war and leading them on the battlefield. And as an extension of this, I would like to add that since 
the exarch's mass are a collection of the other lost souls that are of that shrine within it. The phoenix lords are a collection of exarch souls. You get it? So it's 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 one stage up. The shrine exarch is a collection of all the souls that have um, become lost on the path in their armor of the Exarch. And the Phoenix Lord is the souls of Exarch armors contained within them. Sorry, never mind. Next time we will talk about what is the Howl of the Banshee. Until then, bye.